Hey listeners, welcome to a new episode of Podcast Demastered. I'm your host, Ethan Meyer, and I'm joined, as always, by my two very good friends, Wade and Chelsea. And welcome to episode 50 of the podcast. Um, we got a, uh, a pretty chill episode today. Um, we're essentially just doing kind of a, uh, a check-in with the, uh, with the crew here and kind of what we've been up to since the, you know, since the start of the year, you know, some games we've been playing, some, you know, shows we've been watching, movies, books, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. So it's just going to be kind of a, you know, pretty, pretty open dialogue kind of show, just kind of checking in, see if we, uh, you know, see what we've been doing. So, um, Wade, I know that the most, I guess the most recent thing is you got to watch, uh, the new Dr. Strange, um, film. Yes, I did. You actually got to watch it twice. I lucky, did. Lucky yeah. enough, <laughs> opening weekend. You got to, you didn't go premiere, my, premiere night though, right? You did, did you go premiere it's, night? I went Thursday night and Saturday morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's like, mm-hmm. that's probably the best way to do it. Cause then Thursday night that, you know, you get your mind blown and then you have Friday to think about it. And then Saturday you go in like, all right, I want all my questions answered. <laughs> you get to watch. It was, it was really nice. Like I wasn't expecting to go twice. I got surprised yeah. uh, Thursday. Um, and then, yeah. So Saturday was just like, no, like, I guess we're going to go again. We've already got tickets and, um but it was one of those things where like okay now let's pay really close attention yeah (laughs) and see if we can spot like easter eggs and things like that um it was a lot of fun yeah Yeah. um seeing that it's i mean it's still like in its first week we'll keep you know we'll keep spoilers we'll keep spoilers out of it but what was your like uh what was your initial take on the film um it was a blast you know like the movie starts and it's just straight into the action um, and it does not let up the entire film, and then the movie's over. It's 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 very fast. Being a uh, being a big uh, Scarlet Witch fan, was it more of <laughs> was it more her movie, or was it um, was there like enough Wanda in there to to satisfy you, to satiate your your Wanda needs? For now, um, <laughs> it was a lot. It's a lot of Wanda. It's a lot of Wanda. Yeah. Um, the whole plot is centered mostly around Wanda, um, and Strange is just kind of dealing with that. Is Strange <laughs> for just there? For is, is Strange just there to kind of like push the plot forward? But it's 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 more Wanda's movie. Only sort of, kind of. It's yeah. like Wanda's movie, and she's pushing the plot forward, and he's just like running from her the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a slasher film. <laughs> um, no, it kind of is, you know, and there's. There's there's so many like cool horror elements, yeah. Um, in the movie, and it, they just kind of slip in like, and sometimes they're cheesy because it's Sam Raimi. You know, it's very yeah, uh, Evil Dead and stuff like that. Yeah, even, and there's even a few times where it's like stuff that is directly from that series. You know, it's just like oh, that's funny. That's a cool mm-hmm. reference. Yeah. Um, and you have your typical Bruce Campbell in there. He's in there. Yeah, he's he's yeah he's in everything that Raimi. He's like the the Stan Lee equivalent, but for <laughs> Sam Raimi. But for, like the, but for Sam Raimi. <laughs> dude's yeah, got to so, be in everything. So he's in there, and, um, you know, all the horror elements. Like, it's not, like, a scary movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But but it does have moments where it's, like, that's really tense, or, like, or like it might make you jump a little bit, or, yeah. like, wow, that was super freaking creepy, you know? Um, it's got a lot of really cool stuff to look out for. How was the... You know, without going too much into it, how was the like the multiverse aspect of it all? Um, um, like how how far did they push that boundary, like visually and also like narratively? Uh, well, visually, uh, quite a lot. Like you hear a lot about it. Um, you see lots of different little things. Um, but they're really only in like one other main, like one other universe, like for a portion of the time yeah Um, otherwise it's like quick glimpses and like references and stuff like that um people probably were expecting like the entire movie to exist in like this universe and this universe and just constantly jumping back and forth and stuff like that uh but no it's about the multiverse yeah um and characters trying to use the multiverse to their advantage 
Right. Um, but I will get more of it. We'll absolutely get more of it. Yeah, I guess that was kind of my uh, my next question is, you know, like I said, we're trying to keep spoilers at a minimum, but how this movie ends itself, like, it, I guess the multiverse is very much in our uh, future, or is it kind of like does this move is this movie like a, an end cap for it or is it more just like another stepping stone in this grand like multiverse uh, story um so if if you if you count like the spider-man movie if you take the spider-man movie and like the multiversal story set up there um it's kind of an ending to that okay. story but it's not it won't be the end of the actual multiverse at all um in fact the end of the movie points to uh a fairly recent very huge marvel story involving the multiverse um in the comics you mean in the comics yeah yes um and if they really are going in that direction um we'll we'll have ourselves another end game yeah yeah um I, yeah i've seen i've seen a lot of you know anytime a uh, a movie releases in the mcu you know speculation abound <laughs> all over the <laughs> the interwebs about where like where this is going what's happened you know what happened you know all this other stuff um do you have any uh like hopes or any theories or anything that you like want to see happen oh without without ruining like uh any like character endings where it's going yeah yeah yeah. like oh no not really i mean like as far as like the uh like the avengers like side of the mcu yeah. um or it seems that we're definitely heading towards the secret wars okay. storyline yeah which is fantastic yeah um although like in the comics the comics took like i don't know 12 years or something to like start and then reach that point um so a lot uh, there needs to be a lot of setup for that because just because of what all that entails right. um but as far as the characters go, I mean, Doctor Strange is heading straight into a new plot at the end of the movie. I mean, like, kablamo. Uh, Wanda, on the other hand, I don't know. Kind of just question um, marks. <laughs> question, kind of. I mean, she'll be back. Yeah. Um, there's there, a, She's getting a solo movie, question mark, coming. Hmm. Um, she signed on for, like, seven more years something like that i don't know how many movies that entails but her contract at the moment is supposedly Mm -hmm. for seven more years so it's like indentured servitude (laughs) (laughs) um hey she getting she getting that money she yeah you know she is um (laughs) but but also like the between this movie the last movie a bunch of the disney plus movies they're also building up um the young avengers yeah which are yeah, I think that was absolute. definitely. I think that I was just gonna say I think that's a, definitely been more, uh, I guess, expected or like prevalent just based on like the shows and what some of the mm-hmm. movies have been doing, yeah. introducing a lot of these like new characters, oh, yeah. younger characters. Um, so I think a lot of people mm-hmm. were like had that kind of expectation built in already, I guess. Mm-hmm. And people and like and people are crazy about the Young Avengers. Yeah. Um, they want them and they're they've given basically the entire like main team has been introduced now with a few extras except for one member um and we don't know when he's gonna show up he could show up in secret Mm -hmm. invasion who is it maybe he's very it's it's really weird his his it's teddy um teddy is teddy roosevelt teddy roosevelt you got it Teddy is a half <laughs> half Cree, half scroll. Um So I I don't he he would have to be um he'd have to appear in Secret Invasion if they're going to have him in there at all, I guess. Yeah. But he's also he's Billy, you know, Wanda's son. He's Billy's future husband. Yeah. So I in, in in like an original team of team team member of the Young Avengers, so I don't think they could not have him in there. Um, he's he's basically he's like the Hulk of the team. Interesting, more or less. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that was that was we'll Marvel see. Comics Corner right there, folks. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I, I could go on for hours. Oh, I'm, really, I'm but, sure. Hey. I'm, I'm sure you can. <laughs> yes. I, know, I know you can. I know you can. <laughs> um. All right, so let's let's you've mentioned you kind of mentioned the uh, the Disney Plus shows. I, mm-hmm. Did you? Uh, I know you watched Moon Knight. Did you end up finishing it? I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What were your uh, What were your takeaways from the the newest MCU TV show? Uh, so it's it's pretty fun. It it is not really connected to anything else. Yeah. Um, there's like no references. There's no location sharing really. Um, it's very just about moon knight and like his origins and like the characters that are involved with that it uses nothing and nobody from any past anything yeah um which was kind of nice you know you didn't have to worry about oh god i don't understand this because i don't know this person or these events that they're alluding to it's just all straight up him um but if you've seen legion from fox like the Mm -hmm. the x-men show um it's very legion it tries to be it tries to be it it tries to be yes um but I did it's... just finish it. So. Oh, did you? Oh, oh good. shit. I didn't know that. What you what you think? Yeah, what what are your takeaways, Chelsea? What are your hottest <laughs> of hot takes? Ethan's Do ready it. for my hot Do takes. It. Um oh, I love the fourth it. episode is the only really good episode. The fifth one has some moments and the sixth one is just kind of an expected wrap up. I feel like Yeah. The problem That's with these fair. Disney Plus shows they want to be able to Well, no. They're short, but they're way too long still. Because they right. want to stretch yeah, yeah. out these stories, yeah. and I'm like, you could have just made a movie out of all this time. Like, uh-huh. all these episodes are 45 minutes, close to an hour long, and I'm just like, you're almost adding filler. Like, the first three episodes, I don't understand. Like, some of that part is just really bad, really cheesy, and kind of boring. So, I understand people that didn't want to stick around that long, and then I'm like, well, then here's finally the good episode. We could have just, like, cut off the first, <laughs> like, couple episodes. and Oh, yeah, because they draw the mystery out, but, like, with the split personalities you know they draw that out for quite a while and make you jump back and forth between the two bef- before they like under before they themselves kind of understand what's going on right um and then you get to start piecing together their past after that uh i mean there's like action in all the episodes but like it's not um like a lot like a ton you know yeah um so like what you're saying chelsea absolutely um you know, they could chop it up and shove it all together. They really could. You know, what's interesting to yeah. me is like just based on some of the uh, the Phase Four stuff that I've seen already, I feel like the movies would have been better as shows, and some of the, and the shows would have been better as movies. <laughs> <laughs> that is because I feel like a lot fair. of the shows had a lot of padding, and I feel like the movies have like like you want more. Like there's there's like the Eternals yeah. is a good example of that. I feel like that would have been a much yes. better TV show than a movie because I feel like there's just so much to mm-hmm. unpack, and they really could have like like did way more of a character focus on each one of them. Like I, I feel like they did a, a good enough job for what they could be in a film, but I think that would have made a much better TV series. Oh yeah, well, and stuff um, like definitely. stuff like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I feel like could have been just a, a movie. That <laughs> you know that one mm-hmm. absolutely really could have just. Like I understand why WandaVision was a TV show because it, it, along with its story, it was also just kind of like a, a very like creative like homage to sitcom television, which e- with each episode being it's mm-hmm. different. Like so, like you know, I get that that makes sense, but some of these other, like even Loki, I feel like would have been fine as a movie. Um, yeah. But yeah, even I think like Black Widow honestly probably could have used more actual story to kind of really make that a, a, like, a more impactful show or more yeah, impactful like, storyline. Yeah. A show would have been yeah. nice for Black Widow because that because it was like a farewell to the character, you know. Yeah. Um that one could have used a lot mm-hmm. more like characterization yeah. with with her mm-hmm. family and stuff through it to yeah. explore that past relationship and Definitely. and the atrocities of the red room and stuff. That one really would have yeah, I feel like that would have been, been nice. a better show because, like, in the film, they try and spend too much time with spectacle, and the spectacle was already like, like bad. Mm-hmm. Like, it had like a TV budget, but they made a film, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> so yeah, I feel like yeah, 
I don't know. It's also just like some of these characters, you know, some characters are uh, are more interesting or you want to know more about them than others. So it's just kind of like, what, like mm-hmm. you know, I haven't seen Multiverse of Madness, but just based on its uh, conceit alone, I feel like that would have been a pretty awesome like TV series as opposed to like trying to put so much into, a, you know, a two hour film. That show would have been like Cliffhanger Central. <laughs> hey man that's that's prestige oh, television good TV show. i'd have been yeah. like i'd be like crying all week waiting for the next episode <laughs> I, that's that's rude now <laughs> that one needs to that's stay tv done TV. right then yeah no 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 <laughs> yes i need i need all of the scarlet witch slaying her enemies and not just increments okay i need all of it all in one sitting please and thank you that's what benjamin's for yeah but you true. can't you can't binge Disney Plus shows. They don't let you. Good. Without you being you just a psychopath. wait for them to come out and then no, binge it. That's no, what I did. No. Mm-hmm. Psycho. Sometimes, sometimes if a show. I am not a psychopath. <laughs> Rude. Some, sometimes if the show, like, uh, you know, like with Moon Knight with Chelsea, it's probably better to like binge it because, like she was saying, like some of it feels kind of dull, and like watching that and then having to wait a week for another like oomph you know it's probably better just to kind of sit down and yeah. watch it all on like a saturday well with that one specifically like if you're not a fan of egyptian culture and stuff like that like that is all that show is i feel know? like a um, what, and some people don't feel that i f- so. i was gonna say a lot of the stuff that i was seeing for like on the positive side were people who aren't not not, not even necessarily like fans of the mcu but they're like, I'm really digging this show. It's like, it's giving me like the mummy vibes and, you know, stuff like that. Like people were actually like, it, it, yeah, absolutely. were engaging with it because of the, uh, the Egyptian like undertones. So they do a really probably... good job of like being respectful towards stuff and things like that too. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Um, that was like the most interesting part of the show to me. It was just when it got into really ridiculous cgi fights i was like please go away you had something in the show and now you just ruined it for me (laughs) although you know like that oscar isaac he's a he's a great actor well yeah Mm -hmm. he's acting with himself for most of the shows yeah (laughs) yeah it's pretty crazy he really he really um gives it his all and actually like he really like leans mm-hmm. into a project you know like he doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't like phone it in yes. for anything so i do appreciate right. that um i i i didn't watch it um i watched the first episode and it's just with t- tv's tv's hard for me um if i don't get hooked on that initial episode it's very unlikely i come back to it especially if it's a weekly release kind of thing because by the time that next one comes out i've already forgotten about it or moved mm-hmm. on you know what i mean so it's totally mm-hmm. fair mm-hmm. unless it is something like a binge model or like well maybe that first episode is just kind of shit I'll, I'll just watch the next one see where we're at you know i'm more likely to watch it i guess but with the re- the the weekly model if that first episode is not just a banger then i'm just like yeah i'm done <laughs> you know i had that same <laughs> what's problem with... the next show we're supposed to get uh is miss it... marvel is it yeah. is it i thought they pushed that back mm-hmm. I thought it's coming out in June. I was gonna say I think they. I saw someone post a uh, a Marvel like an MCU release calendar a couple days ago, and it was like Miss Marvel's June and Thor: Love and Thunder's July. Mm. And then I think they had like What If season two for like August or September or something like that. Um, oh really? I don't know where that source came from. It wasn't from. Uh, it wasn't like an official like from Marvel Studios or Disney or anything, but. It was a nice infographic, so if <laughs> you know, um, um. no, uh, yeah, Miss Marvel's June eighth. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did yeah. push it back. I thought they just pushed it back farther. <laughs> and I think uh, She Hulk's supposed to come out this year too, and Secret Invasion I think is also supposed to come out this year. So, yeah, they don't have time frames. It's just yeah, still labeled dates. as twenty twenty two. Yeah, they don't have release dates for any of that stuff past Thor. I don't think. So mm-hmm. there's Don't plenty of about uh, the oh um time. Black Panther does it has a date November 11th. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I thought that was pushed yeah. back. Oh wow, okay. I think I it was. I think it was out. supposed to come out earlier. I think it was supposed to come out in February. Initially, oh yeah, that's right. 
and they pushed it back. So yeah, plenty of MCU stuff coming, um, both mm-hmm. film and TV. So you know, doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon, for better or worse. Um, uh, Chelsea, let's uh, let's move into your corner. You've been playing a lot of uh, okay. games here lately. Where do you want to Where do you want to start? Oh, yes, I have been playing a lot of games. Definitely, some of them have really stuck with me still. Like I played What Remains of Edith Finch, I guess uh-huh. a month or so back. That yeah. one, it's a really short game. It's like less than two hours, but it's really well done. Really yeah. great storytelling. That story just stays with you, and it, I do want to play it again, just to experience it all over again and to get that platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Always the platinum you know. hunter. Ah. Uh, I mean, Every once in a while. Yeah. That's the best thing about a lot of those uh, bite-sized uh, game like experiences, like those little like one to, you know, a couple hour like mm-hmm. indie titles. It's like they're so easy to replay again, you know, as opposed to you finish yeah. like some hundred hour behemoth, you're very unlikely to do that ever again, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, you're exhausted. You're like, then. all right, I'm done with this and I never want to see it ever again. <laughs> Persona 5. Cough, cough. It's, it's so... But Red like Dead finishing the too. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, no. There's. Yeah, I really. I like how there's a, the. Yeah, just a whole variety where you can play these 60 plus hour games and these ones that are a couple hours. So I've been mixing it up. And. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to, that I got to try this one out. And I definitely have a couple more on my list to enjoy. So. Have you, have yeah. you, had, have you had any uh, duds? Like games, you're just like, eh, this isn't super great, but I'll, I'll push my way through it. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a dud, but in my opinion, it was not a game for me, and I struggled to get through its storyline, and its storyline wasn't really made for, like, just for you to only play that. It was mainly for its multiplayer, which was Star Wars Squadrons. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was not my type of game at all but i made it through somehow <laughs> was it was it because of, like just like gameplay reasons like just the the dog fighting aspect and um, yeah it's it's definitely leans more into like simulation than arcadey so is that kind of like was that mm-hmm. a turn off for you yeah it just it wasn't a fun game for me i was hoping it was gonna be like a little bit chill but you know i could there's nothing chill it, about piloting I just... an x-wing <laughs> no no there's nothing i could not relax playing that game i was <laughs> getting angry at the screen yep definitely happened a couple times because i was like i can't get through this i keep dying this is dumb but did you it's, i mean Sorry, it's I... well done for people who like those games so did you have uh there's a mission that i had trouble with it's the one where you you have to lay out a minefield you're like playing as the empire and you have to lay out a minefield to stop like all these uh rebel ships from escaping and you're in like this you're mm-hmm. like a debris field did you have problems with that one yes that yeah. was the absolute <laughs> worst one i died so many times and it would be just like i would almost get that last ship and then it'd be like it's gone now and i'm like yeah. are you kidding me i have to do this all over again <laughs> that was annoying about some of those missions they didn't have any like save points halfway through it was yeah, like all or nothing I, I yeah i agree yeah the checkpoint system in that game is non-existent <laughs> <laughs> like you some of these missions are longer than others and you'll be playing for like an hour and if you hit a fail state it's like up oh, start over you're like what yeah. the fuck <laughs> that mission that was so sucks upsetting. it's so it's so hard you yeah. have to like i was so wade for context there is a so you're in a debris field and there's all these like old uh you know it's, old mines just floating around and your objective is to fly around in like a tie fighter or whatever and activate all these mines before this like rebel convoy kind of flies through to try and escape and it's really like piloting is already like difficult so trying to navigate a debris field and find these mines and activate them all and then you have to shoot them for them to explode they're Mm -hmm. not like proximity mines so you have to like sit there and time all these like ships flying through and shoot these mines to destroy these like rebel ships and there's like dozens of these like huge rebel like carriers and stuff and transports and all this other shit it's and like if even one of them escapes you fail 
That sucks. That sucks. Yeah, that's And then awful. I had a problem. Yeah. I had a problem where there were like two mines I hadn't yet scanned for that part. So I had that those were at the very end. So I had to like speed my way over there and then yeah. I have to go back to at the start of it and then I have to try to somehow hit those mines to Yep. If it's not fun. <laughs> I died. But so- I I did it. I was done. I was okay. I was going to say I probably died, I don't know, half dozen times doing that one because like I never or I guess I I, I can't I didn't say I shouldn't say die. I failed. Like I never died doing mm-hmm. it, but I'd yep. always have like a ship escape. And I'm just like, are you fucking mm-hmm. kidding me? Like, am I the only one on my team doing this? Like, <laughs> sucks. That's <laughs> there's like, I felt there's like, like 30 other TIE game. fighters out here. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. So, yeah, that was, for me, that was the only mission that I didn't, like, I didn't enjoy because it just felt so, like, it just felt like a chore, you know? And, like, it, there was mm-hmm. no, like, fun component. You weren't dog fighting. You weren't doing anything. You were basically just, like, setting this, you know, half-baked trap. And, mm-hmm. and then that, that was kind of it that was like the whole crux of the mission and it was just like ugh. but yeah. i really enjoyed that game but i like uh like flight sim kind of games um even mm-hmm. like on the the old days like on the pc like playing like x you know x-wing versus tie fighter and stuff like that like i really enjoyed those kind of you know those kind of you know games being in the cockpit and dog fighting like um so it was just right up my alley and I appreciated that it was a little bit more on the simulation side because you had to like really think out your strategies, you know, because you can mm-hmm. control your engines, you control your shields, like where your shields That's like are positioned everything. on your ship, mm-hmm. like the power of your lasers, like all this stuff. Like it was, it was really cool. I, I really want them to do a sequel to it. Um, but they're, that studio is currently, remaking dead space so so yeah we'll see what you know but i feel like it was also it was a budget title because it was supposed to be a vr only game and then they just did like a wide mm-hmm. release for it but i feel like it did pretty well it did good reviews i'm I sure it so. probably made yeah. decent money it's a star wars title so and it was like you know i think it was a 40 dollar game so i'm sure a lot of people picked it up just because it being a cheaper title so it had to have done well mm-hmm. so i'd like to see another one I'm assuming, Chelsea, you will not play the uh, sequel if they ever make one. <laughs> no, I will not. But I hope you enjoy it if they make a sequel. Yeah. I like. I tried I, it out once. Yeah. Well, I remember when you and I would play Battlefront 2, you never liked doing any of the space combat. And that's like all I wanted to do. Like, I, <laughs> like I love no. the space combat. Oh, my gosh. I, I hated that so much. Yeah. I love but <laughs> I did enough of it where I platinum that yeah, dumb you game. That game but... so. And some of, those, some of those trophies for, like, the space combat was were some shit like you had to destroy like ha- you know 50 hero ships or whatever and all this other mm-hmm. stuff and I, it yeah. was insane yeah not I, yeah i don't enjoy it that much <laughs> yes. so yeah i've i've moved away from that one and now the game i'm currently playing is control nice and i really love it so far i love everything about it and i think what was really exciting about this game is that I knew so little going into it. Yeah. And so I'm not going to, you know, give away anything about the game except for any time I I run across any like document or recording I pick up, I immediately just have to read it Mm -hmm. or watch the video. And I've never really felt like that for many games before. I just want to know as much as possible about the place I'm in. Yeah. I remember when that game, I remember when that game came out, it was on a lot of like game of the year lists. And I think a couple outlets gave it game of the year and, the common thread that people were talking about as like a highlight was the fact that it's one of the few games like you're saying where you actually want to engage with all the like minutia like audio logs and documents and mm-hmm. all those collectibles that in most games you're just like oh cool i found this and then you'll like never open it or read it or give it a second look mm-hmm. and then like in control it's like some of the best parts of the game are like in these like collectibles <laughs> you know like Mm -hmm. the writing is really cool yeah because it's you know it's a not black ops but you know a lot of it's like the whole game is just like this big mystery you know so Mm -hmm. you you you're almost compelled to like want to try and engage with everything because you want to you the player want to know as much of what's going on 
mm-hmm. you know, as possible. And I'm like you. I haven't played it yet. It's been on my list for a while, but I try and to not um, look too much up on it because I also want to have that sort of uh, like surprise factor when I play. You know, I don't. I don't really want to know <laughs> too much about it. I. I yeah. I remember I watched enough where I'm just like, all right, you know, it's Remedy. I like Remedy. You know, the game, the gameplay looks cool. The setting and the, the concept and everything looks cool. I'm sold. I'm just going to get it, set it in my backlog, and, you know, get to it eventually. One of those things. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. It's, I can't wait to play more. You're so playing that's... on a, you're playing on a, uh, your PS4, right? And it's just a base. It's not a PS4 yes. Pro. Yeah, it's just, I think it's a base, yeah. Have you run into any, uh, uh, like, technical issues, like frame rate stuttering or anything like that? Because I remember one of the big complaints about that game is if you were playing on, like, a base system, it, like, struggled, and especially in, like, combat areas. Like, you get into combat, and it would dip down to, like, 15 frames a second or something like that. <laughs> oh, you have, have you no, had any I haven't like noticed that? anything. Not with combat, I just sometimes getting out of, like, the the menu screen it takes an extra second yeah. before the gameplay starts up again but that's the least of my problems with playing a game this year i have had <laughs> i've played other games that were a lot glitchier so i'm oh really? i can deal with the yes what's, what's been your like buggiest title you've played uh, it's so sad it's been my buggiest title too it was guardians of the galaxy that game oh. had so many issues for me on the ps4 yeah great game <clears throat> so much fun I didn't have any writing, issues with but... it, but I was on the PS5, though, so... Yeah. I feel like that game kind of fell into the, uh, this is technically a next-gen title, but for the install base, let's put it on old systems, too. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much most games right now, isn't it? Pretty much yeah. most releases, so... they have mm-hmm. to release it on the old stuff, yeah. because otherwise nobody would be able to play it. <laughs> yeah, otherwise your sales would... <laughs> you, you're definitely, like, cutting your margins severely, which... <laughs> Not to get too off topic, but there's already like some games coming out where they're, you know, canceling the uh, last gen mm-hmm. versions of mm-hmm. it. Um, Gotham Knights yep. um, and uh, the new Star Wars Jedi game is also next gen only. So, and the you know the Dead Space mm-hmm. remake is also next gen. So they're slowly starting to get to that point where it's just like, yeah, we these are next gen games. Like we can't get them to work on old old systems. I'm curious. Um, if God of War Ragnarok does the same thing, because I, I just, wouldn't be surprised. I, no. I just I, I understand they have that huge install base, so it's just like printing money at that point. But I just can't fathom that game working super well <laughs> on a on a base PS4. But what do I know? I'm an armchair game developer, so. But yeah, yeah. Guardians is another one of those oh. games that I have sitting in my. Uh, backlog that i'm not in a big hurry to get to just based on a premise alone because i don't like the guardians as characters like fundamentally i just don't like anything about them really um but i just heard so many good glowing things about the game that it it compels me to at least try it you know like what were, yeah. what were some of your like technical issues aside what were some of your favorite things about the game i know both of you played it so feel free to chime in too wait it's so pretty yeah like <laughs> yeah and it's maybe that's the ps5 version i don't know i don't know but like just it was so it looked so good yeah 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 Yeah. yeah i mean i thought yeah it looked nice i thought i was just more engaged by the banter and just all the writing like all the little things the writing is you really could be good. walking that's so funny. You you play as Peter Quill, so you can just be walking around places, and the other characters will comment about what you're doing, and you'll comment back, and it just like you go off on a side it's... road. Like I know there's a chest or something over here, and they're like, "What are you doing, you idiot? Like get yeah. back over here!" And Peter's just like, "There's a, I'm just trying to get a thing, there's a man." Thing. Yeah. And Rocket's just like, "You're stupid. Get get back to work." Mm-hmm. It's yeah weird. yeah. Everything I've everything I've like read about the game and, and heard, you know, everyone talking about it, like it seems like they really like nailed that group, like those characters, mm-hmm. you know, because they're they're not the MCU counterparts. They're more, I guess, close. I guess Wade, you can kind of answer this. They're closer to like the comic book iterations, more so, like in design and 
and whatnot as opposed to like mm-hmm. trying to mimic what the MCU versions are but people who are fans of Guardians like said that yeah this is like a Guardians ass Guardians game like <laughs> like they really yeah. nailed the team dynamics yeah I was a little bit skeptical at first because it was so different and like the characters look different and everything from the MCU but I was glad that they took that step back because I also just really got to enjoy them as their own characters right. and some of the characters I realized I liked way more than I like their MCU counterparts so <laughs> yeah, that was that. pretty cool I mean it's, it's... well because one of the fr- go ahead oh because one of them for example is Mantis I didn't care for her character in the second Guardians movie I was just like what a useless character you're just I just I have like no words and then playing the game I was like she's hilarious and very interesting she is pretty cool yeah. her um her game version her and that her specifically is much closer to um the comic version um however they did include like that dazed like <laughs> mystical you know personality <laughs> like I guess that she has in the MCU mm-hmm. that's not how she is in the comics. Yeah. Um, in the comics, she has a huge role in, like, the fate of the galaxy. Like, she's the celestial Madonna, um, which <laughs> is a huge thing. Um, and they make her that in the mo- in the game, too. They don't tell you what that means, and they don't tell you what she does. But, you know, but people, like, respect her, and they're like, oh, shit, it's the celestial Madonna. And she's <laughs> just like, what's up? <laughs> 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 and, and the Guardians are just like, um, okay. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Because the only one I think that's met her is is Gamora, I think. Mm-hmm. Like once. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh with the uh with the recent um kind of dumping of that studio from its uh from its parent company, Square Enix, I'm kinda curious mm. um where they go if they try and do a sequel to it because it it had like critical acclaim but not financial success and then i'm also kind of curious like now that they're not part of square enix like where does that marvel license like where does that end <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but yeah i would be curious to see if they do try and attempt to make a sequel to it or or if they just you know we're on our own now so or we're part we've been embraced <laughs> by the embracer group <laughs> so <laughs> if you know what what that studio does you know what they do next because seemingly they knocked it out of the park with this guardians game it's just i think a lot of people were probably skeptical at first and it kind of that probably led to a lot of the initial low sales oh i mean it came after mm-hmm. the avengers game yeah and people were probably yeah. like connecting the two which wasn't really fair yeah um because they had nothing to do with each other like at all um, but I would see why people were like, oh. Yeah. You could see why a casual, just like, mm-hmm. guy walking into a GameStop buying games doesn't, isn't going to make a lot of the same connections as people who, like, pay close attention to the industry do. So, mm-hmm. it's understandable that yeah. that game would have uh, the turnout that it did, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, what else have you been playing besides uh, Control? anything else i mean that's that's what i'm currently playing right now i've definitely played a couple other games yeah this year i feel like the amount of games i played this year is how many i in total i played last year and some of the games i played were very long games so yeah i mean you finished you started and finished red dead this year didn't you yes yeah that's that's a feat in its in itself because we're only Mm -hmm. you know we're five months into the year and you've already knocked (laughs) out like a hundred hour game so (laughs) And that's yep. a very that game can be as long or as short as you want, I guess, because there's a lot of tedium baked in there. Mm-hmm. Like if you just want to go live so as a mountain man and hunt <laughs> and, and do nothing for forty hours, do it. Like it set it, it sets itself yep. up for that. <laughs> you know, so true. <laughs> or it's like, no, I just want to rush the story. So, um, yeah. Do you have any other? Uh, do you have any games on the horizon post? control that are like you know they're going to be a daunting task 
like a, a 60 hour plus game in your in your future that you're looking forward to or kind of you know like setting up for well i am going to play the mass effect trilogy again oh, i the, plan to do that the legendary yeah. edition yes yeah. yeah so i already have that and everything but there's a couple other games i want to squeeze in before that so i feel like i have a very long backlog but i'm getting through it all these games are games that i already had yeah. and but there's definitely some games that have come out recently and some games that are coming out later this year that I really am looking forward to playing. I'm just telling myself to finish a lot of this that I already have. Yeah, I was going to say, you got until most likely <laughs> mid-November to... <laughs> to Holiday. Yeah. Holiday time. <laughs> yeah. With with uh, Starfield mm -hmm. vacating a very uh, you know, prime mm -hmm. real estate, I can see uh, Hogwarts Legacy swooping in, trying to nab that, because that is like... November 11th is like a prime release date. You got mm -hmm. Thanksgiving after, and then you got the Christmas season. So that seems kind of tailor made for Hogwarts Legacy to kind of take that spot, as opposed to releasing like early to mid December. Yeah, very likely. Hopefully, we get that official release date next month. Yeah. Or something. Some more news, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, we're getting ready to kick into game news season. <laughs> In the next couple mm -hmm. weeks so <laughs> should be getting a lot of uh, interesting announcements um yes. all right well with that said how about we uh take a quick break um before we uh before we continue on here before we get into what i've been doing sound good yes. sound good all right sound we'll take good. a quick break All right, welcome back, listeners. Um, we're gonna continue talking, just you know, some of the stuff that we've been uh, we've been doing. Wade, you know, he's been watching all the uh, MCU stuff and and you know, consuming all of that. And Chelsea's been playing a lot of video games, but she's also been watching a lot of movies. Um, Chelsea, what are some of the ones that have uh, stood out to you this year? Yeah, so I've definitely you know early in the year watched all the Oscar nominated movies, but. In between that time, I've been kind of going back and re-watching some movies and some movies and some series that I've watched most of the movies, but I finally caught up. One of those series is uh, Mission Impossible. Oh. I actually really enjoy that series. Have you, you watched from like the like the beginning, the, like the very like yeah. Mission Impossible, mm -hmm. the first one? Wow. Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm officially caught up because I hadn't seen the last... I actually hadn't seen the last one because I thought it was two. And then I was like, no, it was just the one. But it was fun to watch them all the way through and just yeah, watch all of Tom Cruise's stunts. It's just incredible. I also feel like some of those films don't do his stunts justice, enough justice, because they like to add some extra special effects to the screen. And I'm yeah. like, he's actually doing this stuff, but it looks CG. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, each... Especially since like uh, Ghost Protocol, like each each yes. like subsequent film after that, it's like, all right, what's his like new crazy stunt that he's gonna do for this film? Because like each each new one has like a highlight. It's like, all right, this mm -hmm. time you know now he's he's climbing this building. All right, this one he's hanging onto the side of a a passenger plane, and you know this one he's you know doing he's whatever. Flying like, a helicopter, yeah, yeah. Like he always like tries to find some like really <laughs> bombastic stunt to mm -hmm. showcase his, you know, that he's a one-of-a-kind actor in that in that front, for sure. Yeah. He's like, he's literally and... like the last action hero. <laughs> like, for real. That's so true. And it's, his films are just fun. I enjoy them. And yeah. I think it's just, there's two more left. I think they've announced mm -hmm. it as a part one and part two. So the next two years will be those films. And then yeah, they just, it for now. Didn't they just announce the title for, one? it's a Dead Reckoning? or whatever mission yes, impossible dead reckoning right. is the mm -hmm. is the next one that's coming out yes. that's like next year i think right yes next year yeah. yeah 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 ghost i always thought it was interesting i remember when uh before ghost protocol came out um i was skeptical because it was um directed by brad bird who is from mm -hmm. pixar acclaim 
And I'm just like, this dude's jumping from Pixar to direct a Mission Impossible film. Like, what? This should, <laughs> this should be interesting. And that movie kicks so much ass. It's so good. It's so much fun. It's Yeah, it's fun. It's not like it's kind of cheesy in parts, but like it's not like cringe. It's just like, oh, man, this is just like a good time. This is just like a fun action mm-hmm. movie. Doesn't take itself too seriously, but also isn't doesn't lean too far into like camp. Where it's mm-hmm. just like, all right, this is kind of a joke. Like, yeah, it's it's that it's was really a, it's really well done. That was the first Mission Impossible movie I actually watched. I watched oh, it really? with my mom in theaters. We just went for the heck of it, and we're like, okay, that was a good time. So then, I was like, I want to watch the rest of them. And but I a, hadn't actually watched them do you like have all a, in one sitting. Do you have a, a favorite out of the uh, what are we up to six out of the six of them now? Yeah, I see oh no what was the last one called i don't want to call it i liked uh fallout no i like rogue nation that's my rogue favorite nation. one i think rogue nation is pretty one. cool mm-hmm. rogue nation is pretty cool i think i have a soft spot for uh mission impossible 2 because it's john woo as a director and it has all of his like mm. trappings in it like the motorcycle like duel and then he's got you know he's got the doves flying in the background during like one of the fight scenes and the whole like uh, oh, face off yes. stuff where like they they're wearing like masks of like other people like mm-hmm. that's like just like a you know a pretty stereotypical like late nineties early aughts like action film. <laughs> Tom Cruise has got his crazy long time. hair like <laughs> yes, that's what but yeah, saying. it's that's a it's a good movie. I like it. Mm-hmm. I, re- I I mean I like all of them, but and they're also yeah. they're also I mean I guess more so these last couple are a little bit more. But man, those first three are so stylistically different. Mm-hmm. Like the first one is very Great. much like uh, like shadow ops, kind of brooding, um, <laughs> almost like a like a political thriller to an extent, you know. And then mm-hmm. the second one is just <laughs> just a John <laughs> Woo ass John Woo film. <laughs> and then the third one is J.J. Abrams, and it's you know comes with all of his his bluster um and then yeah the fourth and then the fourth fifth and sixth one are a little bit more like they seem more like the same franchise i guess you know even though they're different directors too mm-hmm. i mean i guess uh yeah. rogue nation and fallout are both macquarie but they're Ghost very Protocol. Mm-hmm. yeah and he's doing the last two so he's kind of took over it's like harry it's like harry mm-hmm. potter you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. each 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 film had a different director until like the last four or whatever and then it's just like all right let's just mm-hmm. stick with one guy here so yeah those are those are good films i, I really like them yeah. i'm looking forward to the final two yeah same what is the uh what's the film that you watched that came out that actually came out this year uh, the film, I actually went to my local drive-in because they finally opened it up and I was able to go last weekend. I saw The Bad Guys, the Those animated bad film guys. by DreamWorks. Oh, with... okay. For some yeah. reason, did you, I was... Did you like oh. it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but when you said that title, I immediately was thinking The Other Guys with Will Ferrell. Yes. Oh. I was like, yes. they were playing that at the drive-in? <laughs> Every day. No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sold no, out you. audiences. So, okay, the bad guys. Now, this movie, from the trailer and stuff, I thought it was going to be a little bit more for everyone, but it's definitely geared towards children. This was definitely a heavy kids movie, which, you yeah. know, it's cool. That's fine. I'm glad kids can have animated movies too. I was just I'm hoping it was gonna be a little bit more for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Those damn kids. I mean, <laughs> there were definitely some funny moments that were for everyone, but it just really played into a very simplistic storyline, and I was a little bit disappointed with that. But I loved the style they went with. It was a lot of fun animation. I'm um, definitely some gags, references to various heist movies yeah you know for adults so you know that's okay i mean just adults going into it need to realize this is really a kid's movie so right 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 right. i feel like uh dreamworks definitely as of late is kind of leaning more towards 
more, not more kid focused things as opposed to early on when they were doing like the Shreks and which were kind of a little mm. bit more adult focused. <laughs> I feel like they're kind mm-hmm. of taking a, a, a hard turn and they're like, all right, let's try and get back more into the, like, the kids space or whatever. There's some of their more like recent stuff, kind of like with Fox, like Fox is kind of the same way with their animation. It's a little bit more like geared towards that, the kid crowd. And, and I feel mm-hmm. like Disney, you know, Disney proper and then, pixar like they kind of do a really good job of shooting straight down the middle you know <laughs> so <laughs> for the most part some exceptions i feel like soul's not really a kid's movie at all <laughs> so, but no I... <laughs> I don't think i don't think kids would really gravitate towards that film as much <laughs> i can't imagine yeah. they're too young to realize that their life doesn't matter <laughs> so, <laughs> um is there any uh, yeah. is there anything is there anything on the uh, horizon for you that you're excited to watch that comes out this year or comes out soon? Oh. Honestly, I can't really think of anything. Yeah. I, so no. I mean, there's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's probably something, but it's just there's plenty of older things that I want to watch or need to watch and. I mean, one of the movies that came out early this year, I haven't watched yet. I want to watch The Batman. So. Yeah, same. Hope to watch that soon. Same. It's hard to. Uh, it's hard for me to set aside three hours to. Uh, three hours of like, uh, you know, pure like attention that it Focus. needs. Yeah, that it, mm-hmm. yeah, that it deserves. Um, so yeah, that's mm-hmm. why it's still kind of just sitting there on my uh, watch list. Um, I need to get to it because I've you know I've been waiting for this film forever and then now i finally have access to it and it's still sitting there mocking me so that's the worst part yeah 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 i could be watching it right now but instead i'm doing this podcast so you're welcome listeners (laughs) (laughs) Um, well since you haven't watched the batman yet what else have you been doing well like you i've been going through a uh a very extensive backlog of films and here recently, how I've been choosing what I watch is almost purely based on runtime. <laughs> <laughs> like by the time my day ends and, you know, I have my son to bed and I have like my, my time for myself, I usually have about an hour and a half to two hours, you know, for me mm-hmm. before, before I call it a night. So I'll, I, I sit there and I'll go through my watch list for everything. I'm like, all right, what's 90 minutes? <laughs> What can I not get to, you know, what, or if it's two hours, mm-hmm. it's got to be like right at two hours, maybe a few minutes over, give or take, you know, I can't watch these like two out, two and a half hour, two forty. you know, mm-hmm. one of the nights I was, I was very tempted to start to watch or, uh, the Irishman. And then I was like, oh my God, this thing's almost four hours long. I was like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't stay up to one in the morning for this. Like, I just, no. so it's, it's still going to sit there. It's, and <laughs> Still gonna sit on my uh, Netflix queue as for <laughs> forever probably. Um, but one of the uh, I've watched a lot of stuff. Not everything is super noteworthy. Um, one of the films I want to talk about is uh, it's called Freaks. It's a it came out in nineteen thirty two. It's a black and white film. Um, it's not it's not it's not a uh, it's not a silent movie or anything. But mm-hmm. it stood out to me. Um, because it was heavily censored and also banned in a lot of places around the world. And after watching it, I can understand why for the time that it was heavily censored because the kind of the whole the whole premise focuses on these like uh, side like the uh, like a circus and all these like sideshow performers, anything from like trapeze mm-hmm. artists to like you know the you know, the, the freaks right you know like the the we like the woman yeah. with a beard uh, you know the you know, the guy with no legs you know what i mean like and mm-hmm. what was interesting is for the film um all of the like actors in the film are actually from they're actually like our sideshow performers so none of it's like fake or stage it's not prosthetics or anything like that they're actually like interesting you know that's their that's their background um the storyline is is essentially um, this like trapeze artist, like this beautiful like trapeze artist, uh, agrees to marry this um, freak who's essentially like the leader or like the 
the manager for all the all those like sideshow performers and this dude's like super wealthy but you know he's obviously got like some sort of like deformity his specific deformity is he's like uh, a little person you know like he almost looks like a uh, like a toddler but you know he he's like an adult and he has like you know he's dressed up in like mm-hmm. a tux and everything and he's obviously like you know an adult but he just he has that visual of being like a, a child so she agrees she wants to she agrees to marry him because he's like head over heels in love with her because she's just this beautiful lady you know but she's basically just doing it to like get his inheritance because she had she's like <laughs> she's like fucking the like strong man in the circus <laughs> the i think his name's hercules <laughs> So like these two these two concoct a plot to like basically kill this dude after she's married so they can get um his money. And all of his like friends, all the other like sideshow performers like realize this and like they basically like try and like off her. And this mm-hmm. film <laughs> the last like <laughs> the third act in this film is fucking crazy. <laughs> it is it is the the director um todd browning he's known for doing like horror films like he did dracula and he did a couple other vampire films so like his kind of bread and butter Mm. in that era is like very dramatic lighting and and these like tonal shifts and and kind of setting up these scenes for like these more horror scenes but this time instead of doing it with vampires he's doing it with all these like sideshow performers and like Mm -hmm. the end of the film is like there's like a storm and like he's like using these he's like revealing these characters and like lightning strikes so like there's like a flash of light and you see one like underneath like a carriage or whatever and i'm just like this movie is oh, fre- dang. like this movie is <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> like there's also probably one of the most badass scenes i've ever i've ever seen in a film one of the performers is a guy that has no arms and no legs all right that's like his that's his uh, abnormality there's a scene, and you could tell the director also thinks it's cool because it basically has no plot significance. It's just like a five minute scene of this dude um, pulling out like a thing of cigarettes and like a box of matches and like lighting his own, own cigarette with no arms or legs. <laughs> it is, it's like the most impressive thing I've ever seen. I'm just like, this dude is a badass. And, like, later on in the film when they're trying to, like, kill this trapeze artist, he's just, like, hiding out with, like, a knife in his mouth, like, under underneath this, like, tent or whatever, <laughs> like, scoping this chick out. I'm like, this movie is fucking awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. That sounds um, wild. But just based on those characters alone, like, I can, because I, I can see how people would think it's, like, exploitative. But they're like the heroes of the story. They're like the characters you're rooting for. They're like, like these guys are badasses. Like they're awesome. And like the normal people, quote unquote, are the pieces of shit. You know, like it's like kind of like the whole premise mm-hmm. of the film is just like, you know, these these normal people are the ones that are terrible. And the, the freaks are like the actual like good natured, like respectable people. You know what I mean? So like that's kind of like mm-hmm. the, the message there. But I definitely I had to check it out and it's all it's super short it's like not it's like barely an hour oh wow like, so that was another that was another reason why I'm just like all right I'm watching this because <laughs> <laughs> so, I got an hour for sure um so yeah um I watched it on uh, HBO so if you have access to um HBO or HBO Max or whatever um I would definitely say check it out because it's it's an impressive <laughs> film for um, for that era, for sure, just based on like some of the uh, lighting techniques and composition and staging, and just like all his performers are just so fucking cool. Like they're so cool to watch, like what they do, and and just like their acting chops too. Like I wasn't, I was like intimidated. I'm just like, damn, these guys are fucking creeping me out. Like this is awesome. <laughs> like this trapeze bitch, she's gonna get her come up and. <laughs> so. <laughs> So yeah, I was rooting for him the whole time. It was, it's a good film. I would say check it out. But I can, I can definitely see why it had controversy when it came out for sure. Um, another film that I've been wanting to watch for a long time is a uh, THX eleven thirty eight, which was mm-hmm. George Lucas's um, directorial debut film. Um, it's, I feel like the script for this film is probably a page long. There's almost no dialogue 
at all. It's all just quintessential visual storytelling. It's mm-hmm. so cold. It's so sterile. The whole premise is kind of like 1984, if you're familiar with the, the George Orwell story. Like, it's all about just, like, these people living in, like, a totalitarian society where they're constantly, like, drugged. So the government can just kind of use them as slaves to just, like, do tedious tasks or whatever. And, like, they're banned from having relationships or banned from, like, you know, sex or, like, really anything. So it's it's very heavy on, like, uh, government control and, like, you know, those, like, 1984 vibes. Um, I think the fact that the film doesn't have a whole lot of actual dialogue, the story's kind of non-existent really like the two characters like fall in love like they st- like one of the characters stops taking his his uh pills his drugs or whatever and starts mm-hmm. becoming a little bit more like self-aware and then he realizes like oh yeah this this girl actually like love her so i want to be with her <laughs> and then they have like you know this this uh secret li- relationship and everything but the thing that was impressive about the film was the like camera work um a lot of people have always given george lucas shit in his movies for uh more for like the visual side than anything else like they've always just been like well this dude's a writer he shouldn't be directing films i would i would say watch this i should i would say watch this movie because this is like the opposite where it's just like the writing is kind of eh, whatever not almost non-existent but hot damn like the the visuals in this movie are fucking brilliant like some of his just compositions are impressive like so layered and i'm just like man this is this is awesome like i want more of this george lucas like i kind of want him to come back and just do another like weird movie like this and kind of leave star you know obviously he hasn't done star wars in a while he's just like a consultant or whatever the fuck but this is what i want to see more of you know like these like really um like auteur driven um, films from him because i think once he did star wars and that took off like that's all he focused on for the rest of his career and then just kind of stopped <laughs> you know like after you yeah. know after this and american graffiti and then he kind of just knocked it out of the park with star wars and he never really did another like project like this again and that kind of sucks because having watched this and american graffiti i'm just like damn these are fucking these are good movies like <laughs> like i would love to see and what's also interesting is, you know, at the time of making this, him and Francis Ford Coppola were, like, having their own... They had their own studio. Like, they created their own studios, like, called it Zoetrope. And, like, mm-hmm. Coppola is, like, heavily involved with this film. Like, helped with, like, the editing. Helped with, like, getting it off the ground at Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers was kind of shitty about it. So that's why George Lucas never worked with them ever again. Like, <laughs> there's a whole <laughs> interesting backstory with, like george lucas and and coppola's like relationship you know in these early days it's 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 interesting i would say it's it's i would say it's a a good watch if you're into more like the visual side of things because like i said the story is like very opaque you know i would would, (laughs) it's it's (laughs) it's it's very much a vibe for sure um I watched. I've been trying to watch a lot of uh, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson films. Like I've seen a few, but I've just been trying to fill out my backlog with the ones that I've missed. Um, the two that I've watched here recently: Inherent Vice and uh, Phantom Thread. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about Inherent Vice because I still don't really know how I feel about that film. I feel like that's a movie that you need to watch like three times to even understand what's happening it's one of those (laughs) labyrinthian rabbit hole movies where like the plot kind of just turns into like this very convoluted mess Mm -hmm. but the mess is like so fascinating that you don't really mind it's it's hard (laughs) it's it's a fucked up movie it's weird um phantom thread you've seen phantom thread right chelsea yes i have what were what are before I get into it? What are your? Because I know you're not a, I know you're not an Anderson fan, um, but what are your what are your what are your takes on Phantom Thread? Oh, it's been a while since I've seen that. I mean, 
when did that come out? I watched it around the time of the Oscars then, so um, it's been a couple it like, of years. It was like 2017, 2018, because it was Daniel Day Lewis's last film. He, that's, yeah, it was like retirement right. film. His like swan I mean, song film. I think well, it was I mean 17. Daniel Day Lewis was yeah okay yeah well, so I don't remember much about this movie. I just remember it being very odd and it was just not my thing. I just kind of thought there was no point to the movie. I mean, I knew there was like, there was obviously a story there, but it was just, I watched and I was like, okay, well, check that off my list onto something else. It just, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of Paul. That's kind of his like vibe with films is a lot of people, people who don't like his work all kind of have the same complaint. They're like, I just finished this and I don't really know why I watched it. You know what I mean? Like his plots aren't like a standard those, you know, like a, 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 an arc, you know what I mean? It's kind of just, it's less plot and it's more character. If that makes sense. He more like creates yeah. interesting characters and he just wants to like shine a light on them for two hours and then just end it as opposed to like i'm going to create a character create a conflict form resolve that conflict and roll credits like it's less of that with a lot of his films and it's more just like these characters are very they have like their intricacies and their and these like nuances and i think that's interesting so i want to make a movie about it and that's kind of what phantom thread was to me this is like the most italian movie i've ever seen that's (laughs) non-italian like it reminded me of like watching a, a fellini film because it's very oh. indulgent on on uh, De Lewis's character, and like one of my one of the best things about the movie is Daniel Day Lewis has this like ability to like command a scene without ever like raising his voice. Like the whole movie, he's just like this, he's very soft spoken, but everything he says, he's such a dick, <laughs> you know. Such and he a just creep too. <laughs> yeah, he's creepy and oh, and gosh. but like he he will just like say a very like soft subtle line and just like damn mm. that just like cut to the core of this person. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but like the the uh, the female lead, uh, Alma, which was played by uh, Vicky uh, Creeps or Cripes. Anyways, she was amazing in it. And I've never, you know, I've never heard of her. I don't know if this was her, like, first film or whatever. She's, like, from Luxembourg or some, or, you know, one of those, you know, one one of those <laughs> countries. <laughs> um, but she, like, I could just sit there all day and just watch those two just, like, live their life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was so weird and strange. No, thank you. Oh, God. Like, it's not like a, it's I... not a, it's not a love story where it's just like, oh, these two characters, like, fall in love and it's like, a ha- it's like, these two characters are very strange. Unhealthy. <laughs> and yeah, very, yes, very unhealthy. I mean, she literally, like, poisons him to get him in this weakened state. To make him state nice again or something. Because when yeah. he's in a weakened state, he's, like, vulnerable. And when he's vulnerable, he's, like, very, uh, like, charming and emotional and and loving and then when he's back at like Mm -hmm. his full strength he's just back to being this like narrow-minded i only focus on my career and and fuck all else so she literally just like subtly poisons him when she wants him to be like nice (laughs) (laughs) and then like there's a point in the film where she basically just tells him she's like hey uh i'm gonna poison you you're not gonna die you're gonna wish for death but you're not (laughs) <laughs> and I'm going to nurse you back to health and it's going to be great. And he's kind of like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I will say though that this movie I thought had more of a story than like licorice pizza because it, it kind of does follow stuff and it's just, I just don't vibe with that story. I just don't like story. It's about terrible people and unhealthy relationships, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I see. That's, I'm like the opposite. I I don't need everything to be like quaint and and like happy and and almost like an unrealistic way. Not that this is like super, well, it's super realistic, but it's unique and just the performances itself is what is so captivating about it. Like these two just feeding off each other, 
and just sometimes they're it's just like unique. looking at each other and i'm just like this is so tense i'm so uncomfortable watching this like this there's a scene towards the end where she's like cooking the mushrooms and he's just sitting at the kitchen table watching her like cook these poison mushrooms and there's like no talking at all but it's like the most uncomfortable scene <laughs> ever <laughs> And another like another impressive thing about it is he was his own cinematographer. He shot the film himself. Because his usual cinematographer, whose uh, name is escaping me, um, couldn't do it. He was like he you know he had prior engagements. So Anderson's like whatever. I'll just shoot the thing myself. And this film is gorgeous. It is so so beautiful. And it's like in a kind of like a, in kind of like a gritty kind of dusty way. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have all this like glitz and glamour when you watch like period pieces and they're very vibrant and and like um, glamorous and bright. This is the opposite it's of all the of that. Opposite. Mm-hmm. But there's still scenes that are just like very visually striking. Like I can think of the one where. You know, they go to like the the mountains and she goes skiing and he's just kind of sitting at the bottom of the mountain, like, you know, drawing his dresses and just that shot alone of him just sitting there and like the mountains in the background. I'm just like, man, this is this is gorgeous. Like, I love everything about it. And like it was his sister (laughs) is also a very, very good uh, like whoever that actress is. Her name's escaping me. She did an amazing job. She's very like dominating and very and carries a scene and the way that she like talks to her brother and kind of puts her brother daniel day lewis's character in his place is also just so good (laughs) like there's a scene where he's like getting fussy or whatever and she basically like is just like you know shut up i will destroy you and he's just like okay i'm sorry (laughs) like i don't know it was it may be my one of my favorite paul thomas anderson films like I would, I as soon as it was over, I immediately wanted to watch it again. And I haven't, I haven't had that with one of wow. his films since uh, There Will Be Blood. Both Daniel Day Lewis. So maybe there's maybe there's something about Daniel Day Lewis that I really like. That dude is such <laughs> a. I miss that he's not acting anymore. It's a huge loss. Because that dude is mm-hmm. very very good. I can tell in this film too. He had a little bit like if you've seen the film Lincoln. And how he's very soft spoken mm-hmm. in that film. I feel like that kind of carried over into this a little bit because <laughs> he's so soft spoken in this movie. But instead of being like this sweet old Lincoln, he's just like this <laughs> asshole dressmaker. <laughs> the opposite, yeah. <laughs> it's just like the antithesis of Lincoln for, for this film. <laughs> the anti Lincoln. Oh, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty much like. Uh, some of the more recent stuff I've watched. Um, I did get to see The Northman, which it's it's a, it's definitely not a movie for either one of you, <laughs> I would say. I don't think either one of you would enjoy it. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen anything Robert Eggers has done. He did The Witch and The Lighthouse. I've seen The Lighthouse. Okay, so The Northman is definitely his more mainstream film but it's Mm. still very much an edgar's film (laughs) and i'll just kind of leave it at that um okay but it's very good um he's one of my like favorite new directors um and this just keeps that keeps that alive like i this may be probably like my favorite film i've seen of the year so far um it's and pretty sure it comes out tomorrow on video on demand and i really want to get it just so i can watch it again oh, nice. it's just it's just that good it's it's excellent um so yeah that's and like i said there's a bunch of other stuff but you know we don't want to talk for 10 hours about all these movies that i've watched <laughs> those are kind of just like some of the ones that stood out to me as of as of late um once we do our uh end of the year um episode you know we'll have We'll have more stuff to to talk about because I have some other films that probably will be pretty high on my rankings towards the end of the year that I can expand upon. So, but for now, that's kind of just what I've been up to. Some watching a lot of uh, older films and watching a lot of Anderson films. So, <laughs> kind of kind of <laughs> all over the place. Um, 
I think next I want to watch The Master, and then I should be all caught up on all the Anderson films. So, so yeah. Um, do you guys have anything else that you would like to uh, add before we uh, before we call it a show? Did me talking about any of these movies make you guys want to watch any of them? I know Chelsea's Great. super super excited to watch Inherent Vice from Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know it. Uh, Freaks actually sounded kind of interesting. Yeah, that one. That one. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, even if, like I said, since it's like barely an hour long, it's not even like even if you hate it, it's not like it's that <laughs> you've lost that much <laughs> in your life, you know? Like that's true. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like watching an episode of prestige television. You know, it's like that. It's that length. So, uh, it's definitely very worth manageable. It. It's definitely worth it. It's got a really interesting story, very good performances, and amazing cinematography. So, especially for cool. a film in the '30s, like mm-hmm. it's pretty incredible. But yeah, all right. Well, Chelsea, why don't you uh, why don't you take us out then? Yeah, well, I think that'll do it for this week's episode of the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast. Uh, share it with a friend. Also, listeners, we want to let you know we are going to be doing a special anniversary episode in the next couple of weeks. So please send us any questions you have for us. Questions about favorite films, uh, various things we have not talked about on the podcast, things we have talked about on the podcast. Any questions at all, please send it our way. You can send those to our social media sites and we're on facebook twitter and instagram at pod demastered you can also feel free to send us an email at demasteredpodcast at gmail.com thanks again for listening to this week's episode and we hope you tune in next week see ya see ya